Welcome back. We've got our half birthday today and like with all wonderful new babies, we always want to celebrate all those little milestones. Half a, half a year, six months, we've made it. So, so excited. But the great thing is, is because you've been able to give us such amazing support over the last six months, and what a difficult six months it's been, we're able to bring you some fabulous little deals that we've got for you today. The first thing we're going to have is if you shop with us today, you're going to be able to get one of our Sewing Street badges, totally exclusive and really, really, really beautiful. I love the fact that they've kept these as hexagons because you can then tessellate these together when you are, when you get a whole group of them together, you can put them in like a giant hexagon if you're doing EPP. Now, when you get this, check the back, don't throw the piece of paper away, I'm not gonna say any more. So everybody who purchases anything through the show today will get one of these automatically. It'll go into your basket, nothing to pay, no code to enter, that automatically pops into your basket, one per customer for the whole day to celebrate our half birthday. But on top of that, we've also got this wonderful little competition that we're running and the competition you're going to get entered into automatically. You don't need to do anything. First prize is 15 of these incredible Liberty Fat Quarters. You're automatically being entered into this competition for that. And then when you are, um, when you check out, You need to, once you've checked out, you'll automatically be entered into the competition. You need to make sure that you have checked out. So first prize here is you're getting 15 fat quarters of the Liberty. Then second prize, you're gonna be getting two of our exclusive Sewing Street, uh, what are we calling these design panels? I'm sorry, I forgot. These charm squares here, we've got one of them is the charm squares. So first, second and third prize, we'll get each of them, we'll get one of those. And then last, uh, the other pack you're getting, which I am absolutely besotted with, I love this next collection here, is this wonderful collection. Look at these gorgeous sewing machines. Now, being a collector of sewing machines here, you can see this is one of Debbie Shaw's panels, and you can just tell how beautiful this is. So anybody who enters and comes in second or third, you're gonna get one of these incredible, incredible design panels. All you have to do is make sure that you have checked out today by making a purchase and you'll automatically get the badge for free. And once you've checked out, you'll automatically have been entered into the competition. First prize is the 15 fat quarters from Liberty. Second and third prizes are one of these gorgeous Debbie Shaw panels, or you're gonna get one of the fabulous, um, is this the Harbour range? Just double check, the Harbour range, I just wanted to double check. We've got so many beautiful products, I wanted to make sure I got the right name there. But these are our second and third prize winners for our competition there today. All you have to do is check out, just automatically entered in once you've checked out. So that's there. And then I'd love to re-show you the early bird. It's gone, sold out. I'd love to show you our first half day birthday special. Gone, sold out. So. We're hoping this is going to last for the rest of the demo because one of the most fabulous gadgets I have ever seen with regards to sewing is this fantastic Bridgewater um, stitch remover. So let me show you what you get in your lovely little box. Not only are you getting the wonderful tool, you're also getting the brush to keep it clean, the oil to keep it going, and the charger, because once you've charged it up, there's a battery on the inside of it, which means even when it's not plugged in, it still works, which is fantastic because you can then just keep going as you like. So this is the main star of the show, but they're giving you this wonderful little pen for free. This is a water erasable, uh, water erasable uh, fabric marker. Don't iron it. I'll tell you how I know, or you can just go back and watch the show yourself. Don't iron those because they become permanent. But you get those all together for that one price of $29.99. Now, many of you have not seen how these work, and I know I'm a gadget person myself, but when I look at things, I'm gonna go, yep, that's gonna tear my fabric, that's not gonna be very good. <laughs> it almost makes me want to sew my stitches wrong so I can use it. So what I'm gonna do, now I won't, it's gonna, you get this, you take, I've got some stitch fabric here. I'm gonna start on this side just to make my life easier. What? Oh my goodness, I haven't even demoed it and half the stock is gone. So all of you out there, you know what you're doing. They are fabulous. So what I've done here is I've just stitched a line, okay? I'm gonna take my little th shredder, uh, shredder, my little um, unpicker, and all you're doing 
is you just follow that seam line and once you can get some anchorage with your hand, this is it. It just goes all the way along. And you can see it is just, it almost makes you want to stitch things incorrectly just so that you can use it. And when you get a good run on it, you can tell it just goes brilliantly. Now, when I saw this the first time, I thought, yeah, yeah, that's going to tear the fabric. Look, it's not. Even when I put it on like that, it's not tearing the fabric at all. And look, it's just fabulous. I love it. I, lo I bought one myself this morning because every time it's been on air, I've not been able to get one, so I bought one myself. They are just so, so easy to use, and you can tell it has not damaged the fabric in any way whatsoever. It is very, very safe, really, really easy to use. And just in case you didn't think, I'm going to do it again, just because it is such fun. So all you're doing is you're taking, how much? Quarter. Gosh. So all you're doing, you can see this is stitched to the very edge. I'm just going to put that in there to try and get... Doing it at a funny angle, you see. There we go. So I put that there. The seam line is there. And all you're doing is you're just following it along. Oh. And you just keep going. Unpicking has never been so easy. It is just so, so, so simple. Just look how easy that flows through. And this is, there are no pre, this is all live. There is no, nothing is set up. That's why it sells out every single time it's on because they are just so fantastic. It's just brilliant. There's another one done. Now this one, I'll just to show you, these are all fully sewn up. They're not already sewn up. You can see my lovely little red line all the way through. And all you're doing Exactly the same as I did before. I just try and move this a little bit to get a tiny little bit open. And literally all you're doing. Oh. And as you keep going, you'll find a way of holding it. I'm finding if I, if I, oh, it's all gone. Even though you haven't got it, I'm going to just finish this strip. What I do is I hold my little finger down there and I do that. Because all you're doing is you're anchoring your bottom fabric. And there we go. And you just keep going the whole way down. So there we go. They are all sold out again. I'm not surprised. Such a great deal. And congratulations if you've got one already. And enjoy your wonderful free gift that we've sent you through with this wonderful tool. Now, don't forget our next special. We've got new specials on at every hour. Um, at our 10 o'clock hour, we're going to have this fantastic tartan box. I just cannot get over how beautiful the fabrics are on these. This gorgeous feel of tartan here, this wonderful herringbone. And you've got this wonderful container, a huge amount of space there, and this wonderful hard tray that you're easily able to put all your notions, etc., in any form of storage and bits and bobs you need to do at the bottom. And then all your notions just go straight back in, and then that closes up nicely there on the edge of the box and you carry there. Now, congratulations to everybody who's got that already. If you do want to have a little sneak peek, because everything seems to be selling out so quickly, if you do want to have a little sneak peek at our 10 o'clock, that's what we've got. A fabulous little product there. Now, don't forget, we have got our fabulous block of the week. Now, this week you will see we've got two blocks of the week because I'm having a little holiday. I'm taking next Friday off because I'm going away with my friends that I haven't seen in all, over a year. So we try and go away every year. So I apologize. We're going away on Friday morning, which means I'm going to miss you. I'm really sorry. But I've got two blocks for you this week. We had two last week. We'll have two this week. Um, and we'll just see how that all goes. So the first thing we've got to do, let me explain to you what block of the week is. We've got two different uh, colorways that we've done our block of the week. Um, and we've got three different colorways to go behind. And all of a sudden I hear everybody going, huh? So what we've done is we have created this fabulous block of the week. We've done two main colorways. Let me show you. The one that I think is a little bit more modern, a little bit out there, a little bit pushing your boundaries, trying to see whether this is something for you. And what we've done is we've created this block of the week with a black background. Now, black is quite a contemporary choice. Not many people use black as a background, but I think you'll agree it's really, really fun. And it really highlights those fabulous colors in there. 
They are just so, so gorgeous. So that is our Blossoms colorway in the black. And what we're doing is we're selling each week, you're going to get the Blossom panel and the instructions. But what you won't get in the little bundle is your backing. So what we've done this time around is we're going to give you a panel of colors each week. This is the first time you're going to have all eight of our colors in our block of the uh, block five. These are all eight of the colors here. And what we're going to be doing then is you are going to need to get two and a half meters of background color. So what we've done here is we've decided we thought the three main ones people would use are either our white. And then what we'll do here is you're going to need two and a half meters of this for the whole project. That's your borders, your sashings, your bindings, everything. So what I'm doing here is I'm just showing you what the white would look like around your fabric, because I think it's quite nice to be able to see exactly what it looks like. And you can see that's what the white would look like. Now you will need to buy your background fabric, which is two and a half meters. Um, and this is now only a single purchase. You won't need to buy that again. So that's 17 pounds 45 for that two and a half meters. If you're going to go for the white, that's on your screen at the moment. And what we're doing with that is that that's everything. Your binding, your, your, your sorry, your borders and your sashing and for all the things in the block. So that's you done for all of the fabric in the background. And that way we were able to bring you the panels which focus on those wonderful co colors going with it. Now we've got two colorways with this um, design. This this time around, we've got the blossom, which is the one I've just shown you, and I've got the rainbow. Now, the reason I'm showing them to you here is because I want you to be able to have a little look and see which you prefer with the background. So this is the rainbow panel um, on the back of the white fabric. So you can see which fabric you actually prefer the backgrounds being on. So that's a nice big colorway there. Um, and you are able to then see that on the white. And then what I'll do is I'm going to show you each one of these on each of the colorways so you can see which one you prefer, whether you prefer the white, the cream or the black. Now, that's also what half a meter of the, of, the, of the fabric looks like. So we do sell these by the half meter. You can buy them by the half meter as you go along. Uh, the borders and sashing will use 1.2 meters of fabric. So for if you just wanted to buy it as you go, that just gives you a bit of a guide as to how much you need for each time. So there we go. Now block five, let me show you what that's going to look like today. So you are, these are the instructions that come with the panel. And then obviously whether you're buying the rainbow panel, which is this one here, you're going to get that wonderful panel and the instructions all there for $7.99. That's what you're going to get. And let me show you then what this looks like in our colorways. Bum, ba -da -bum. Right, so this is number five in our Rainbows colorway. Such a good product. Such a, I love this little block, it's so fun. That's with the white background there, that's the uh, rainbow colorway. We've also got this in our Blossom colorway. I'm just grabbing number six out as well while I'm here. And then this is block number five in our rainbows colorway, but with a cream background. And you can see just how fun that is. I do think that the cream works very, very well with this colorway. And remember again, we've got those bundles of cream available for £17.45 for the two and a half meters. So we can just show you now what these all look like on the cream and the black. <clears throat> so that's our bundle for our rainbow. If we are going to look at the black colorway, in case people want to see what that looks like. Now remember, we sell the black by the half meter, but you do need two and a half meters of the black in order to make this your, your quilt. So you can see that is what it looks like with the black. This might be easier if I use my little sample pieces because that might not be quite as visible for you. So you can see that's the black with the sample pieces and then you don't end up with, um, oh, where am I going? There we go. 
you can see that just works so beautifully with the black there. This is our rainbow colorway, but if we also want our blossom colorway, this is what the blossom colorway would look like with the black. I really love the black background, I think it's really good. And then if you don't like the black or the white, we've also got the wonderful cream. Got this cream available as well. Now remember, we've got these by the half meter, so you can buy them as you go, or you can buy that two and a half meter bundle all in one go. This is now the cream colorway here. Gorgeous colorway, this. And again, remember, we've got these by the half meter, or we've got them in bundles. And you can see that's what the um, blossom colorway looks like in the cream. And you've also got the rainbow then available with the cream background there. And I love the way that we've been able to do this with a different coloured background because I think it's quite nice for you to be able to have that choice in the background where you've got these gorgeous colours that we've chosen to go for that. The team works so hard to make these beautiful fabrics for you. Um, and they're exclusive to Sewing Street, can't get them anywhere else. So those are where we, that's where we are there. Now that is block five. I'm just going to give you a sneak peek of block six as well. I'll be demoing both of these. Um, so that is number six, number six, number six. You know what it's like when you've got six things on your desk and you put them all in one place. There we go. So this is block six in our blossom colorway. Look at that. I just love that. And I've done that in the cream background there. I think that works very, very well. My demo, I've done it with a white background because I'm normally demoing in the black. So I wanted to try something different. That's our blossom colorway there. And then for our rainbow colorway, the finished product looks like that. Love that. I just think they're so bright. And what's so great about this block of the week is what we're doing is it's a skill builder. So each block that you do, you're going to ex expand your skills and you're going to be able to see all the different ways you've improved as you go along. And this is a really good example of showing you how you're going to have been improved. Because all the instructions are very, very clear, lots of um, diagrams as to what you're building, and you'll be able to see how it is that you do all of these, making sure that you work with your bias and you check all of that. But I'll go through all of that at the end of this hour to do block six. So that's a nice little sneak peek for you there for number six. Um, so just to remind you, block five, this is what your panel looks like for block five. And this is the instructions. Sorry, I've got that the wrong way around. So you've got the block five panel here with all the fabric and you've got the instructions here. The instructions have got loads of pictures in on how you cut everything out and do all of that. Um, so that is your Blossoms colorway. Uh, and we've also got our rainbow colorway as well, which is, oh, I just adore these rainbow ones. And then that's our rainbow colorway there. And remember, you will need to buy your background fabric in the pattern. You'll see that I've, called, I've got them as gray. Now, one thing just to remind all of you, in all of our cutting instructions, we have got all referred to fabric one, which is your background, fabric two, which is my dark green in the picture there. And on the top of each of these different panels, you'll see it says fabric two, that's on the rainbow. And if I rotate this down, fabric two in the blossom. And then over there, fabric three for the blossom. And then over here, you've got fabric three for the rainbow. All of those are written here and it just gives you a nice corresponding color. But if you ever get confused, it's all on the back page for you to be able to refer back to. We wanted to try and make this as easy as possible for you. So numbering them from fabrics two to nine, that's what's always going to be on your panel. And then fabric number one will be what's your border. So that's just a nice, simple way of being able to show you what you've got there. So those are our panels for block five and the instructions. Instructions are the same for both of these kits. Now my only top tip on this is having done it myself, Make sure you measure everything carefully. Make sure you double check the instructions for cutting. There isn't a huge amount of fabric to play with, so do make sure that you check everything as you go. Oh, I've just realized I've not shown you the finished product in gray and uh, with white and in with the cream. So this is, I've got it upside down. Let me get it the right way around. This is our rainbow colorway with a white background. And you can see as I try and slowly rotate this up, it's a really sweet design. In each one of these blocks, you will improve your skills as you go along. You can see that wonderful heart 
um, block on the side. That's going to be our last block, which is our beautiful applique block. And the great thing with these is as well, you can use these for making individual pieces. Perhaps you want it as a cushion or an outside of a bag. It doesn't have to be for the whole quilt. You can just pop in and out as you like. And then lastly, we've got our wonderful rainbow colorway in our cream background. And you can see the difference on each one of them as you choose the background is so, so, so incredible. And you've then got that choice of being able to then choose the colorway that you did. One lady online, which I love, is the, the online um, feedback on it with people making their blocks as they go. One lady chose a beautiful claret to use, which is a deep purple, which I think has worked very, very well as well. So that's a nice way of being able to keep in touch with that. So when I do this block, first thing I'm doing is I'm cutting off the selvage. And I'm using the rainbow colorway here for number five. Um, for when I cut off my selvage, because I'm very proud my name's on it, I get very excited every time I see that, you'll see I've cut this a little bit lower because I've got my fabrics two, three, four, five, all numbered out. And then when I cut my next piece down, I take this out and I then get fabric six, seven, eight, nine. So I've always got that at the top of my um, cutting board. When I have my instructions ready to cut everything out, I make sure that I've got all my, so when I know fabric four is there, I'm going to fabric four, that's my dark blue, and I know exactly what it is that I'm cutting out. Now I'm gonna be cheating a little bit here because I've got a finished block. I might as well refer back to it to make sure that I'm getting this in the right order. And I have cheated because obviously trying to do this all on air in a short space of time, I want to make sure that I've got everything ready for you. But the good thing is, is I've done these all in key stages because the, making these is the same for five of the blocks. So we wanted to make sure, let me get this the right way around. There we go. And then that's there. That's there. And there we go. So what all you do is whatever I always advise whenever you're making this block is separate everything out, lay it all out nicely so you know where it is that you're going with everything. And that way you can then you can just play with it nicely and make sure that it's all going in the right direction there. So you can see that's what you're making. So you can see this block, this block, this block, this block, and this block are all identical to make. And the way that we do this, that's the best way of doing it, is we fold the little triangle on top of little triangle, and then I take those to my sewing machine because I like chain piecing, and I put them there because then I know I'm sewing on that side. And then I take that and I rotate this round and I put it there. Now the reason I do that is because if you if you put this that, that way, oh, if I put that one that way and that one that way, they're gonna be completely wrong and you're gonna have to use your wonderful Bridgewater seam ripper to unpick all of those, which isn't a chore, I know, but we just wanna make sure that I've got these all going in the right direction. So I'm putting this on top of that one and I know that that is the seam I'm wanting to be sewing. So now all I do is I take these over to my, my machine the other day, Wendy was uh, Wendy Orlando was in, and she was pressing her foot on the the plug, uh, trying to get the sewing machine to work. So I was just trying to avoid that happening again. And now, because I love my chain piecing process, I just slowly go through this. And remember, everything that you're putting through the sewing machine now is on the bias. So you're wanting to make sure that you're not going to be stretching anything. And I love a bit of chain piecing, so you'll see I'm just putting all four of these through the machine in one go. And last but not least. Brilliant. And the great thing about this wonderful little June Taylor cutting mat is we just pop that there. Oh, sorry, that's just the ironing board, that's not the cutting mat combination. I've heard that's been out of stock for a little while. Now with me, I am a firm believer that if you haven't tried pressing your seams open before, try it now. If you prefer to press your seams to one side, or you've never pressed your seams to one side, try it, see which works best for you. So all I'm doing now is I'm just pressing my seams open, because you all know I love doing that. And then once I've pressed all of these open, I'm gonna put them back in the, system, in the, the block design to know exactly where everything's going. 
to make sure I then put these all back together the correct way. And remember, you've got bias here absolutely on every corner, so don't manipulate the fabric too much. All you're doing is you're just putting the, the iron neatly on top of it and you just press those seams open so that you're not in any way going to stretch the fabrics. And you're pressing, not ironing. So now what we're doing next is we take these and put them back in the equation over here. And I'm very happy to say that all of them are the right way around. Now we're going to sew these together and this is where you do need to pay a little bit of attention. Now I've pressed my seams open so when I come to this point here and we can so when we do this you can see if I roll that back you can see that's not lined up because my seam at the bottom versus the seam on the top are not lined up. So all you do is you just maneuver the fabric ever so slightly until when you rotate these back those seams are exactly in line. Am I right? There we go, you can see that there. And then when I do that, if you now want to pin, that's where you're going to pin. If you do put your seams to one side, make sure they're both going in the same direction because then they'll nestle in nicely there. But we're trying to make sure when you sew these together, you see how those two points match perfectly there? We're trying to get exactly the same thing over here. Now, if you get it wrong, don't worry. I wouldn't unpick it because you will cause a stretch in the bias. You could, you, the buttons were invented for little errors like that. So once you finish the quilting, stick a button on it if you've got a problem with it. But for me, it's more about making sure that you just improve your skills as you go along. And if you're not quite as accurate, that's okay. And I do think if your machine's got the option of being needled down as you're doing this, that will make your life a little bit easier. And then on this side, it's exactly the same thing. So you're going to do exactly the same methodology for all five of them. You're going to line these blocks up perfectly, fold that back to check that you're in a nice straight line there, and then get that all felt there, and in we go onto the machine there. Perfect. Well, hopefully perfect. Now the great thing about this block of the week is if you haven't started this already with us, you can start at any time. These are always available on the website. Even the old one that we did, the block of the week, uh, which was called the Welcome Quilt, that's also available online. All 13 different blocks, in the, uh, 12 blocks and the, uh, the borders and sashing fabrics. All of that's available for you as a block all together. And you'll see as well, if you check on the website, there are bundles as well for the blocks that we've done already um, from blocks one to four. You'll see there's a bundle available as well. And they're all exclusive to Sewing Street too. All the fabrics are exclusive to us as well. Now for myself, I'm a long arm quilter, so I prefer the seams going out uh, for two reasons. Firstly, it creates less bulk, but also I can prepare myself for moments like this where I have literally missed it by one thread. And then when I turn it over, I'm not going to be upset about it, but I have missed that one. But that one is, you cannot get more perfect than that one. So it's a case of it is entirely, there is, a, there is much debate about whether it seems open, seems closed, and personally I don't think there's a right or wrong. It's what works best for you. So you choose it. And the great thing about doing these little blocks is that you can choose it as you go along. So all I've done here is you'll see that I've sewn those together and you'll follow the pattern to make sure that you've got these correct. Now if you want to check that you've got these the right size, top tip, take your square, pop it on top, and if the square is the same size as the block underneath, you've done well. If your square is slightly smaller, then you've probably got your seam too small. And if your square is bigger, your seam on the back of this will be too big. So when you do this, it's a good time to go and have a look at your block and see if it is exactly the same size. That's a good way of learning. And that's when you can make a decision. If this is too big at this point, you can then go and trim this off. But I would say if you're going to trim it, trim it equally on all four sides. Um, if it's too small, then I would consider looking at the back and seeing what the problem is and making sure you can then make a decision. Either you then unpick and redo it, or if this is too small, you then split the difference. So if the white was, say, two threads too small all the way around, then you just align it that it's one thread all the way around, and you can then fix the error that way. 
have a little look on my block of the week um, borders and sashing demo for the welcome quilt you'll see there are lots of hints and tips of how to actually then make your block work if you have had one or two little errors I call them creative adjustments or learning skills either are absolutely fine and we all have them it's totally normal just don't be upset about it you've tried it's nothing worse than not trying wonderful and I'm working in the rainbow there are two colorways here we've got the rainbow and the blossom both are equally as fun um, and all I've done now is you'll see that I've sewn those together and then I'm going to put that on there and once I've done that I've got three then three long strips to sew together Now I think all of you are okay with sewing long seams like this. The only, I'll do one and show you. What you are hoping to have is that that little blue mark there and that little mark there line up perfectly. So what I'll do is I'll just press these two open uh, to show you what I mean to make sure that we can do that. And then you're going to do that with both of these sides to make sure that it all lines up beautifully. And as well, at this point, when you've made block five, I hope you're able to turn back and look at the previous blocks you've done and see how you've improved in your skills and your techniques. Because that's the whole point of this, is to be able to do it as a skill builder and being able to improve as you go. It's such a fun project. Now the only thing with this is make sure you got them the right way round. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so there we go there. Now all I'm going to do is when I line these up, I'm going to try very hard to match these seams here. So all I'm doing is I'm plopping that on top of the other and I'm going to start off as I go. I'm going to line these two up perfectly, line these up and then when I line these up, I roll this back to check that not only is this seam here lined up, You'll see the seam here lined up, but also as I roll, the point of that triangle meets the point of that triangle over there. Now, I'm not a big pinner, I really am not, but at this point, if you are, this is when you would actually get your pins out and you would then attach that there. I'm going to wing it and see how it goes. I should be okay. I'm just going to pop my foot down. There we go. Now I think I just missed that, so I'm going to show you a little trick if you have. Right, so over here, oh no! Oh, I have missed it ever so slightly. So, over here, at this point, you'll see I've just missed that point there, and it's not by much, but here is a really, really important, uh, a nice way of doing it. So you can see over here, as I've stitched, you'll see I'm ever so slightly out over there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here. I'm going to hit that point there and end over here. I'm not unpicking anything. I'm not doing anything more. All I'm doing is I'm starting about an inch and a half away from that seam. And I'm going to slow down because I was going a little bit fast at this point. And there we go. You can see over here, I wobbled as I was stitching there. And now all I've done is I've gone back to do that. And as I fold that open, voila, it's perfect. So if you do ever have a wobble like that, that's the easiest way of doing it. And then all you're going to do is you're going to sew that one over there. And that's block five. Block five will look like that when it's finished in the, ra in the rainbow with the white background and then the blossom with the cream background. Uh, I'm hearing that if you are after the white background, um, we are, how many did you say we had left? 
Right, so the white fabric, um, as everybody knows, is incredibly hard to get hold of at the moment. So there are two of the white backgrounds left. That's two lots of two and a half meters. Uh, lots of you have already checked out and have managed to get it, but there are only f two bundles left of the two and a half meters in white. So if you want that, make sure you get that in your basket very, very quickly. We don't want you missing out. Now, we are gonna now move on to block six. Oh, that's a good tip as well. Because we're doing two blocks in one day, you're only gonna pay one postage and packaging. Oh, that's a clever idea. You see, you're saving three pounds 95 by doing it one week at a time, uh, two weeks at a time. So what we're gonna do now is we've got block six. Let me show you what block six looks like with a white background on our rainbow. That's our white background with our rainbow. Remember, you are gonna need to buy the white background if you are gonna be making this quilt. You need to buy two and a half meters there. So that is what the finished block looks like in the rainbow colorway on white. This is what the uh, blossom colorway looks like in cream. Um, and this is on our block six. So each one of these will come to you. This is gonna be your panel for block six in our blossom colorway. So not only are you getting this wonderful panel, I should have picked up the instructions before I did that. Sorry about that. So we've got our wonderful set of instructions and the panel, all of that available for $7.99. And you can just see that's a really fun design that. You can do that as a wonderful cushion cover, as a bag cover. It's a really nice little block this. Now I will say when you are cutting this, be very, very cautious, double check your instructions, check what it is because I miscut it myself and I wrote the pattern. So it will happen and that's absolutely fine. Um, so do just take care on that. So this is now our rainbow colorway and our pattern available there. That's what the block looks, uh, the panel looks like and the instructions, that's gonna be $7.99 today. And these are the finished blocks I've shown you already. And I'm now going to be using my rainbow colorway and I'm doing this with a white background. But I am going to have to cut fabric number nine and fabric number four uh, again. Only because, you know, things go wrong sometimes. So where are... So there we go. Now I know exactly what size I'm cutting this to. So I'm just going to cut out a chunk of the block here. Oh, almost there. I think there's a nick in my blade. There we go. And there's one there as well. Right. So when I show you the, pa the panel later and there's a chunk missing out of it, yours won't have a chunk missing out of it. So there we go. I'm going to cut these now to the size they need to be. And then I'm cutting one long diagonal, not two long diagonals. Now this is why everybody always says to me, what square ruler do you recommend? I always use the eight and a half inch square because exactly like this, when I come to cut something a little bit bigger, it's nice to have that, two, that extra two, two inches from the six and a half inch um, square ruler. It just makes your life that little bit easier because sometimes you do need to cut that ever so slightly larger block and those larger pieces and the eight and a half inch square does make things a lot easier. Come on. So at that point, you've got a nick in your blade. Make, and you can see there, that's just perfect. Having that eight and a half inch square, being able to then just trim these down exactly as you need to. Now, being a shopping channel at this point, I would say to you, change your blade. It's silly not changing your blade. So that's that one there. I did have block six and it's here. I knew I had it somewhere. Right, so my finished block six looks like that. I'm now going to take this and lay it all out. And as you can tell, I've done a little bit of prep for you just because I was a little worried we might not get the whole demo in. But I will say this is one of the nicest blocks to make. I thought it was really such a lovely, lovely block because you've got this wonderful pinwheel in the middle and building this pinwheel was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed doing pinwheels. 
and each time I do cut these out I always cut the top strip off which I've got the fabric numbers in I make sure I've got all of those there and I put those at the top of my cutting board every single time it's just makes your life that little bit easier to make sure you're not going to miss anything and you're going to get everything lined up perfectly and I always make sure I lay the block out first so that I know what it is I'm working towards to make sure that everything is in the correct place and I've cut everything out correctly and it's all just ready to go. So when you look at this, you'll see that these pink ones are going in a pinwheel. You can see that fabric number six is also going in a little pinwheel. And then this lovely little yellow here, which I think is fabric number five, I've forgotten the numbers of the fabric, sorry. Yes, fabric number five. You can see these are also in a little pinwheel. So it just creates this wonderful, wonderful little block there. So the first thing we're going to make is our half square triangles in the corner over here. So all you're doing there is remember this has got a bias edge over here and this has a bias edge. So when you put these together, I line these two corners over here perfectly over there. And then I take these to the sewing machine and I put them in the sewing machine, but I'm not touching it. I'm not pinning it. I'm lining it up and I'm letting my sewing machine do all the work for me. And all I'm doing is just gently guiding it in from the sides that have got the warp and the weft on. The warp and the weft are on the edges here, which don't have a, a bias edge. And you just let that slide through the sewing machine ever so beautifully. And then you just chain piece the next sect in again, exactly the same way, lining those up and off we go. Oh, I made a little bit of a whoopsie there. So there we go. And then these are ready to go in the corner over here. Now the next bit to do, which is a little bit harder to do, is these bits over here. So you've cut your triangles out. So when I put the pink on the top there, and I'm only saying pink because you can see it's pink here, I'm lining this corner up first. This is the important bit, that you need to line this up perfectly. Because if you, do, if you line it up to the top, you're not going to be able to fit the block on and it'll be the wrong size. So this bit here is where you align your fabric to. And when you do that, you again just let this bias edge go easily through the machine. I'm hearing we've had a message in from Kate. Morning, Kate. She, she's saying, John, I love your shirt. Thank you. And she's loving the blocks as well. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you're watching. Thank you. Are you enjoying our half birthday? Now this one again, again, I'm also pressing my seams open on this one. Again, you press these how you want. I'm pressing my seams open. And the two that I pressed previously, I'm just going to press these open as well. We're doing block six at the moment because I'm having a holiday. I'm going on holiday. So excited, which is also a great thing because by doing two blocks in a week, you only pay one postage and packaging. So you're saving $3.95. And today's our half birthday, so you'll be able to then go and be able to take your saving and you're getting the wonderful badge and you're entered into a competition. There's just lots and lots going on today. So all I'm doing now is I'm lining this back up. Now, once I've done this and you can see I lined the fabric up with the bottom edge there, the next pink one goes in that corner and I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm lining this bit up here. Now it's really important that you line this up here because when you do, you create that point at the top, which means you can join them on together. So all you're doing now is you're lining those up there and just going straight down that seam, letting the machine deal with the bias itself. And what is so, imp so great about being able to do this while I press the seam open again. And by doing the pressing the seam open, it just makes your block that little bit flatter. But again, if you don't want to try that, you do it however works best for you. And by lining those blocks up at the bottom here, you'll see you've now got that point at the top to be able to keep your quarter inch, your seam allowance there. So now I'm joining these two together. 
And the reason we do that is then we've got our piece that is ready to go on the top and the bottom of your block as you go through. And then our last little bit there, we're going to pop that on as well. Now the one thing I will suggest that you do is always make sure once you've sewn it, put it back in and check that it's going the right way. Ask me how I know. Because the number of times that I've switched these round and I've had them sewn like that and it doesn't work. They're meant to look like that because then this creates an extra pattern as you go through. So just make sure you double check you've got those going the right way round. I always point out the areas that I've made mistakes so that hopefully you won't make the same ones. So that's the second hardest section of this block. And you're all done. That's it. You're going to make two of those. You'll see I've made one at the top and now I've made one at the bottom. And then I'm going to make two more of these on the sides just for those to go on. And then this is the bit that I absolutely love about this block. So you remember in block five where we were joining these two together, you're doing exactly the same thing. These are just ever so slightly smaller. So I line these together and I make sure that I'm lining them up on these edges here. And it's all nice and square. They should be identical sizes. Um, and then you're just going to put a seam down this edge over here. And this is what I love is that block five has helped lead into block six and it just means then block six leads into block seven and it's just this wonderful synergy between all the blocks being able to make it work. So there we go, we've now stitched that and now you can see because my yellow's at the bottom I know that I've stitched it the right way and then when I plop that on top of that they should be the identical size and oh, my seam is perfect that is exactly what I'm looking for now when I come to sew these what I always do is I have this one on the bottom because that way then because I press my seams open I can double check that these aren't going to fold over as I go along and I've just moved that out of shot for you sorry there Marcus so there we go Oh, and of course my bobbin has run out halfway through this, so that is always annoying. Um, I have got the little box here. Is there a wound bobbin? There is not. And I love it, the pitter-patter of feet getting the bobbin sorted. Thank you. This is going to be the fastest bobbin wind in the history of Sewing Street. And this machine is so good for it, but I'm committing a cardinal sin by not taking the plastics off first. I hope Jenny Raymond's not watching it, because she'd go... Oh, have you got one? Woohoo! Thank you, sir. There we go. And I was a bit about to commit heresy with this, and I would have had my lovely friend Jenny call me and tell me off. Quite rightly. Quite rightly. So, with a full bobbin, playing bobbin war there, and I lost. We all have that. Um, so now all we're doing there, we're just sewing down this line, quarter of an inch. And there we go. And then I'm pressing this open. Now these ones, I do think it works better when you press them open. And now again, we're making sure that our pinwheel goes in the right direction. So you can see I've got a pink there, pink there, pink there, and pink there, creating this wonderful pinwheel effect. Now you'll see I've already sewn these two together, so I'm going to do exactly the same over here. I put one on top of the other, try and line up all four squares as I go, and then I fold this back, and you'll see that there's a seam here and a seam there. I want to make sure that those seams are in a perfect line. I'm going to pop that over there. Hopefully this will work. Oh. 
right, and now all I'm doing is I'm pressing that open again. And then once I've done that, all I'm doing is, you can tell I've sewn these two together, so I'm doing that twice. I then put these one on top of the other, and I'm sewing these together. Now, what I need to do is to check that this line in the middle lines up perfectly, and that the seam in the middle matches perfectly. Now, I can see now already they're not going to, simply because I've used two different sewing machines and my seam allowance on the back is too thin compared to this side. That's correct. This is a little bit thin. So I'm going to sew these together, but it's not going to be square. So just the, what's important is that you match this middle point. That is the most important bit here. Gosh, doesn't an hour go by quickly? Now, when people ask me why is it I press my seams open, let me show you. This is a perfect example. You can see you've got this massive amount of fabric joining together in the middle there. If I pressed everything to one side, I'd have had a massive lump. So there we go. We're just trying to make sure that that now presses exactly in the middle there. And once we've done that, you're sewing that to that edge, that to that edge, and then you're sewing that there and that there. And that's your block six. A really, really lovely block there. A little bit of concentration needed in certain areas. And I've highlighted those as we go. You need to make sure that we try and get that point in the middle. Make sure you focus on when you're dealing with the bias over here. When you're sewing these together, make sure you get that point lined up with that point there. And voila, you've got block six ready to go. These are now the blossom colorway that I'm doing at the moment. And I use the white colorway. We only had two of the white colorways, uh, the white background fabrics left when we started this hour. I'm not sure how many we've got now. Um, I'm going to show you my blossom colorway. Now remember, I cut a large chunk out of it during this one. Yours will come to you fully, fully correct and all fine. So you're getting the wonderful um, instructions there for block six. You will have a full panel there other than the one I've just shown you where I've cut a bit out. So that's going to be your blossom colorway there. Then we've got our rainbow colorway here for number six. Oh, that's number five. What have I done with the rainbow? This is really annoying. I've got the rainbow one here and I know the second I move on from this, I'll find it. What have I done with it? Sorry. So the rainbow one, it's not going to be in this panel. I'm really sorry about that, but it'll make enough to make that panel there. Um, and you've got the wonderful set of instructions there. That's the panel for number six. We also have block five available today. Um, we've got the number one is going to be our blossom. This is number five. It's the first time you'll have all eight colors to you. And that's going to be the set of instructions for you there in block five. And then we've also got our rainbow colorway here for block five. And that's available there. And don't forget, we've got our wonderful birth, half birthday sale and we've got wonderful gifts coming up, but not gifts, but specials coming up. Well, I think they're gifts because the prices are so great. We've got this wonderful tartan fabric at the top, beautiful herringbone at the bottom, wonderful little storage box. That's brand new to us today. And we've got that coming up after the hour. But we've also got the fabulous Jane back again. Really excited about that. So we'll be back in a little while. We're going to just redo the set and clear everything down. We'll be right back. <laughs> 